Good morning, and here you are. How are you feeling today? It is that wonderful day, Tuesday. How are you doing today? How are you doing today? It is eight o'clock, and here we are. Hi, Azim. Good morning. Hello, Loretta. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Hello, loyalty rare butt in her in her. All right, I love that. So how are you doing today? It is a wonderful morning, Tuesday. Colors, yeah, it is, eh? Yeah. Today we have a really amazing topic. Wherever you are, that is where you go. And your guys are going to say, what is she up to? As usual, they're always questioning that. Hi, Dawn, how are you? Enjoying your summer off? <laughs> so today is another beautiful and amazing morning. And we're going to talk about wherever you are, that's where you go. And many times we do not understand this. So today, you know, is going to be hot. It was raining all day yesterday, but today we have hot weather and rain. So like yesterday, same thing. So you're wondering wherever you are, that's where you go. So you're wondering if I'm there, Tessa, where am I going? And that's what you're going to say as a marine i'm already there where am i going but i'm not talking about that i'm speaking with you about where you are in your head that's where you'll go so focus on where you are in your head i need to bring my water closer yesterday i had a little water issue so hi ryan good morning so wherever you are that's where you go so it is a beautiful morning. So where is your mind this morning? Because wherever you put your focus on in your mind, that's where you'll go. Make up your mind for this. When you have something that is working for you and you see that you're getting where you desire to go, that is not the time to slow down. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, everybody. How are you guys feeling today? Because wherever you are, that's where you're going to go. That's where you will go. So. It's all about your mind, where you put it, that's where you will go. So many times we go through life and we have something we have been doing for weeks and it's working and we're doing wonderful and we say, you know what, I'm going to cut some of it back. But I'm there to tell you, if you want to succeed in anything, look at those that are more successful than you. Everybody goes to YouTube, everybody goes to Facebook, Instagram, name it, everywhere you could go, Twitter, threads, whatever. Good morning, Lorna. How are you feeling this morning? So, but there you are. You decided, you know what? I got this. I'm going to stop performing. I'm going to stop coaching. I'm going to cut it back everything. I'm going to stop learning. I'm going to stop doing it. I'm going to stop showing up. I've got this. You will never have it. Those that are more famous and more fabulous in all what they do, if you notice, they are on it every day. They never, ever give up. They do not stop. So if you want an example, you want to be rich and wealthy. You look at Jeff Bezos. After he opens his first Amazon factory or warehouse, did he stop? No. No. There are Amazons all over the world. You could be in Timbuktu. You'll find an Amazon where you can order something and it's in your house in 24 hours. Before, he was a door-to-door -door salesman. But when I, you call good morning. But when he became famous or to a certain level, he did not stop applying himself. He did not stop coaching himself or getting advice from others. He was doing it. So many, they talk. You can read about these famous people. He's not the only one. Many of them start from the bottom. Some of them, like on Shark Tank, they came to Canada with $25 in their pocket. To this day, they're still performing. They're still showing up. They're not sitting back and saying, you know, I, oh yeah, this week I made $10,000. That's it. I'm calling off. There is no such thing as a holiday when you desire to be successful. You do this until the last drop of breath in you has left your body. And if we want to be successful, emulate those that you see that is doing this. They show up day after day after day. They do their best. They, they're there. I personally have somebody that I have been coaching for a long time. 
And then, you know what she said to me? She stopped a long time ago, not today, a long time ago. And she stopped coaching with me. She said, I'm taking a break. And then the break went for two years. And then at the end of two and a half years, something like that, she called me. She said, can we get back coaching? I said, oh, I don't do it for free anymore. And she said to me, no, I don't care. She said, what I know for sure, I need that little vitamin in the morning, in the afternoon. I need you to, to coach me because I need to be successful. So anyway, today she migrated to the States. I still coach her. She has two businesses. She's running her own business. She has people working for her. She's just constantly on the go, but she makes time to get that. And then I say, okay, fine, we'll do it. So we're doing it. But that doesn't mean me. I know it all. I can stop. But then I need to continue. I need to grow. As long as I'm alive, I need to grow. Even if when you say I'm so old, too, too old to learn. That is limiting yourself. I've got this. I've been doing it like this and I'm going to stop. When you feel the urge to stop, that's when you have to push it further. That's when you have to say, no, I'm not stopping. I'm going to push this thing to the end. And look around you. Look on YouTube. Look on Facebook. Look at these successful people. They're, they're selling every day. There's one man, Joe Dispenza, if you guys know him and all of the others. And I forgot all of their names. Every day, there's three, four, five videos of his he's, he's, he's talking about. Why is he doing that? He's very extremely successful and wealthy. But why is he doing that? The thing about it is that everything we have, we can renew except the time we have. And at the end of our life's journey, what are we going to say? Once I retired, I sat on my butt. I didn't share any of my knowledge with the less unfortunate. I didn't give my time to a charitable organization. I did not volunteer. I just sit down. I read higher. And if you can go back to see the day you said that, how your body feels to this day. The more you say that, the more you retire that body, the more you retire your mind, hello sister, is the more it will slow down. So that is why I said where you are, that is where you will go. Wherever you are, that is where you'll go. So if you are the kind of person that believe I am doing absolutely nothing, I'm not going to, I'm just going to veg, sit on my couch, watch TV. What a goal that is. And it makes me laugh. I enjoy it. Really? Is your brain taking in anything? Can you fight that? So because your focus on where it is you are, because that is where you're going to go. So if you put focus into being the best you possibly can, you're going to go there. So yesterday we talked about words, right? So today we have focus and determination. Um, stick to itness and persistency and consistency. Really, if you link those words, they all do the same thing. Just a little tweak here and there is different about those words. So focus. Stay focused on what you desire to have. Even if it is just to see a place that you reside in looking this way, stay focused on it. Focus on making, making it become what it is you desire to be, regardless of the obstacles of others. We cannot go through life and see that other people's ways are affecting us. And do not look at this, I got this, so I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here in the mess. No. If they want to sit in the mess, you let them sit in the mess. Determination. I've got to have it. Henry Ford tells you in Think and Grow Rich, not him, but they talk about him. He didn't have more than grade four education, and his name is still being resonated today. Most people today have certainly have more than grade four ed education. And most of us let our dream goals and desires die before we die. Henry Ford did not. He was very, he had a lot of horrible qualities, but he did not. One quality he had that for sure, I will have it. He said, I do not know 
how to build an eight cylinder engine in one piece. But yeah, I have people working for me and their job is to give me what I need. Good morning, Helen. How are you doing this morning? How are you feeling today? So when you have a desire, when you reach a certain level of desire in your life where you want it to be, and you retire and you got that, you get your, hi, Rita, good morning. How are you feeling this morning, ladies? And you got this wonderful paycheck of retirement and you're sitting and you're just sitting and you're just sitting. You're watching the news. You're not, you're not giving back to life. You have wisdom, knowledge. You have experiences. You're not talking. You're just wandering, sitting and watching TV. I'm retired. And every time you say that, a muscle just collapses. Every time you say that, a bone and a joint is saying, okay, we won't, we're not moving. You're not moving, we're not moving. Everybody is, is stagnant. Pain starts to come and you're wondering why. Do not stop doing what it is you do well because you reach a certain age. You have to have your brain going constantly. You have to, there's always something to learn. The people that are very successful in what they do, they never ever stop. It's not greed. It's using the time that you have so that you leave a legacy. Whether it is writing a silly little story to a grandchild and taking the time and putting some pictures together. You can do so much. Use that brain and bring something that when that child becomes an adult, they can hold it because you see what the legacy we leave is the roots our children need to grow. Because life might throw things at them that we did not experience. And they need to hold on to what they were taught and they will say, damn, my grandmother didn't do that. She would have done that. My mom said to stand up and keep fighting. My dad said, you can do it. So when they're in a situation where they're not happy, they can make a choice. But if they saw you stagnate, if you are guilty of preventing another human being from doing what it is they desire to do, then you are responsible for the results. If you sat down, think about this, and you're thinking, I'm going to get her to stop going to church. I'm going to get her to stop going to visit sick people. I'm going to get her to do that. I'm just going to get her to in that all that talking, meeting people on the street, and I'm going to get Really? Is that where you went with that? And how has that been working for you? Are you satisfied or is there something else you want them to stop doing so you can be satisfied? Stop interfering in the energy of others. Concentrate on your energy. Let people have the experiences. You can give advice, but do not trick anybody to bend in their back so that you can say, oh, well, what are you going to do with that person sitting there all the time? Have you ever thought of it? Give people wings to fly and focus on yourself. Um, determination. As I said, you have been doing something that you won. You got to a really good point. You're feeling satisfied. You have the home paid off. You have the money in the bank. You have all of this. And you just decide, I'm going to stop. But you have a secret recipe. How did you get there? Not too many people are able to do what you did. Is there somebody you will meet someday that you can share it? Or do you just want to keep it for yourself? Because you know what happened in the Bible to the man that didn't do a thing with the talent God gave him. And you guys, I'm not talking about the Old Testament. I'm telling you, that's what Jesus said. He gave us a parable. You have five talents. Those who have more, do more. They get more. And those who are afraid to actually encourage another one to grow, he took it and he did not use it. What happened? He, it was taken away. So when you're sitting there and you're holding your wisdom, knowledge, and all of what you have, and you're sitting like a hen waiting for it to hatch just for you, be careful. Because sometimes a dog wants the eggs. So be careful. Release what you know into the universe. Impact, impact it onto somebody else. A young person. I made mistakes. 
and explain to them, yeah, chances are you will make a mistake. But chances are, if you realize you made a mistake, you can fix your mistake by not repeating it in the future. But if you notice you're doing the same thing, control, control, control. But you can't control yourself. Can't control yourself. And then when you control others so much, then you cannot even control the functions of your body. Do you know that? When you turn around and you look at controlling others, you maybe suddenly your body is letting go. Your body is not doing what it is you desire it to do because guess what? You are too busy controlling others that you did not stop to realize that your body is saying, okay, I'm not doing that for you today. And even when that is happening, good word, Tessa Marie. Thanks, Helen. Oh, I really appreciate that. Even when you do this and you notice that you are doing all of those things, controlling everything within your reach. And the one thing you should control is you. Control your mind. Wherever you go, that's where you are. Because you're going to be, wherever you go, that's where you're going to be. I'm not talking of taking a bus and going to another country. I'm taking, talking about your mind going down the dirty alley of criticism and not good enough people. Finding faults if everyone. Because... It's your decision, your words, your thoughts, your actions, they apply to you. You are prophesizing every time you open your mouth and you reuse that piece of muscle to speak. We are prophesizing our future, not the future of somebody else. Because we are the creator. We made it. We decided about it. We spit it out. They don't care. It's happening outside of them. They have something they're sticking to. I said determination, focus, and stick to itness. You know you're going to get better if you get advice, if you learn something, if you ask a question. When you give some advice to somebody that really is receptive to it, and good advice, not judging, not demanding, you better do that or else. No. Say to yourself, I did this, and it worked for me. That's what I did. I wasn't always where I am. And I tell you that all the time. I wasn't always this person. But I started working on this person to become where I am. And I'm not done. I don't know how old all of you are, but I'm 78 and I, I am not done. Whatever end I have to get, it will have to come to find me. I am not going to sit on a couch watching TV waiting for it to arrive. And if you're doing that, you better get up and start walking. Get out and go outside and breathe. Sit under a tree. Do anything. Go give nature a chance to, 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 to spin itself. Go get, let nature see you. Go see nature. I woke up at 4.15 this morning. And at 4.30, I was outside. And to be honest with you, there was a gray sky. I look around me because I live in a forest and all around me the trees were still. The birds weren't awake. You know what I was able to hear? Because we had a lot of rain yesterday, I could hear little drips of waters here and there. Not in one, not a drip, like a tap dripping, but a little tap, tap. And you know, it's different spaces. That's all I could hear. It was dark and it was not cold. It was warm. It is warm. But there was something different in that energy of the morning. I stood there and I just listened. I purposely do this every day. I go out. I get up and I say, thank you, Father God. I'm Christian, Catholic. I say, the Our Father. I walk through my entire house. And I say the Our Father on the way back up, I open the side door and I go outside and say, Good morning, Father God. How are you feeling today? I take three deep breaths and I just wait. I have no idea what I'm waiting for, but I observe and I listen. How does it affect me? I don't know. But I feel amazing when I do this and I do it every day. So if I stop though, it would be wonderful. 
I don't have to get up at 4.15, but it works for me because I like to take my day, my time to pray, to visualize, to meditate, to think, to plan, to breathe, to be grateful for the very breath of life itself. So there was a time though, I couldn't spend that much time. That's when I was, I was on the treadmill of life. I had to get up early, get the children ready, go to school, cook dinner, go to work, come back, whatever, all of this. It was like boom, 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 boom. And when I realized I didn't have any time, if I woke up with the family, I am in the family immediately. But I am the propeller. So I should start. You notice before you get on the plane, the plane is sounding, right? The propeller is, is spinning. It's getting ready to move. So I decided I will get up half an hour earlier. And I have never, ever let it go. Even when I'm on vacation, I get up. And if I can get the coffee, I sit there and I will look around me. And when I get to the stop, so you plan this amazing vacation or you have this life that you plan and you are there in the moment and you haven't looked up and breathe into what it is you plan to do. I wanted to go out west last year or year, last summer and my because of COVID and fires and everything, my children weren't too happy. So I wasn't able to do that. But when I was standing on Machu Picchu in, in Peru and I stood there, I took the breath and I realized where I am. Did my parents ever think that their daughter would go and climb up there? Or did they have hopes that I would go to Mont Blanc in Switzerland? Or I would take a, gond I would take a gondola from Switzerland to, to France, from France to Italy, just to have dinner and come back. No. But when I got there, I gave praise and thanks because I am there. And that is focusing on you. And if you do not take time to be praising and thanks for where you are, you cannot enjoy it. That is why wherever you go, that is wherever you are, that is where you will go. You need to be in the moment of focus. It is working. Do not stop doing it. If you notice you feel better when you drink water, you drink it. You feel better when you pray, you do it. What, it's always the feeling, and this is why, hello Terry, good morning, I always speak with you about the, your feelings. How are you feeling today? It's not how are you doing that matters, it's how you feel. What is going on inside of you, not outside of you? You have a dream, goal, and desire, and you stop it because the world is, it's raining. I cannot do this. Thanks, Terry, and you too. You cannot do this because it's raining. I cannot do that because it's snowing. And I always say, no rain, no food. No heat, no food. No, no snow, somebody, family will also miss it. No snow, no crops. We need it. So complain as much as you can. It's not going to do it. So what can you do when it is snowing? Have you ever tried as an adult to go lie in the snow and make a snow angel and cannot get up and have to roll to the next thing? To just try to do it. The thing is, do not stop living. Do not stop living because you got to a certain point of your life and you're not giving to life. All we have truly is the moment, is the time. We do not have anything else but this time. The thing is, at the end of time, what are you going to say you did with your time? Time is not renewable. Because you didn't do it today, that doesn't mean it's going to come back so you can do it in the same energy, the same moment. We can't. So the only thing we can do is concentrate on time, focus on ourselves, be alert, be alive, be grateful, be thankful. When you have nothing to be grateful for, like somebody said to me, I have nothing to be grateful for. I, it took my breath away. And you know me, eh? I always have a plaster for every flipping soul. And there I am. Mm -hmm. I said, you can see me, right? 
yeah hmm. i said i'm not going to compare you being able to see me to somebody who cannot see me because the sight is actually deeper than that so don't you think you should be grateful for that silence i said while we're at it and you're deep in thought what about the breath of smell that thing you smell the breath of life when last you your feet did not go where you ask it to go there, there, there is a, a funny little joke I, I heard as a child growing up. And one of the things is that this lady was, something and it happened and she had to run away. Was it a fire or whatever was coming? She had to run. And they said she stopped and she looked at her two feet and she said, you better move because what, what have I ever eaten and I didn't give you? So she's demanding, I ate and I fed you and I need to get out of here. You need to help me. Simple. She told her feet, what have I eaten that I never fed you? I need you to help me run out of this situation. So when last were we grateful for our feet? But you will quickly tell me you have a pain. You'll quickly celebrate. Like my friend who told me, and I should call her, I'm calling her recently, who said to me, I am, well, how are you doing today? I am there with my old knee. And I asked her, what did her knee do? Her, not old knee, her bad knee, sorry. I'm here with my bad knee. I said, what did he do? And she started laughing because she knew, she knows me. And then I had to say to her, you need to stop doing this though. You were a nurse. Did you use your knee to raise and you, you use it, you abuse it. So now it is talking to you, talk back to that pain. I call them sensation. That doesn't mean I don't get them. I said, it was a nice sensation. You okay? I'm working on getting you better. <laughs> so I talk to my body. And just say, you know what? I know I abused you. I know I didn't wear the right shoes and I fell. I knew I put things on and it wasn't warm enough. I know you, you, you acknowledge what you did wrong. But I'm working on making you better. So let's get this together. Touch that spot. All of that is where you are, wherever you are, that's where you will go. It's not a pain, it's a sensation. Your body is talking to you. We call it pain, and then if we call it pain, then it's hurting even more. But if we see it as a sensation, then it is something that we can acknowledge and fix, or work on fixing. And maybe we never fixed it. But if you never fixed it, or we never fixed it, that doesn't mean we didn't do our best. We did. That's all I could do my best. And, you know, the other day, somebody said to me that, what is the one thing that drives you? And everybody thinks, they say, your ego is bad, right? You have an ego. But you can have an ego that is going to propel you to continue to function, to do your best. Everything that has a bad side has a good side. As I said, it's the middle we're looking for, the gap. You cannot go from the good side to the bad side or the bad side to the good side without the gap. The gap is where the miracles happen. So. People tell you, if you ask them to describe the ego, they, by the time they're done with you, you think you're completely in another realm. But it's not bad to have an ego. If that ego will make you keep doing your best at what it is you desire to do, whether it's for others. So it's no point you do something haphazardly. It, it's really you're still not moving and you still have a big ego if that is a detriment. But I see what is it Tess Marie that makes you keep showing up. I said my ego. It does, it believes that I should do my best. And if I stay in bed or I sit and I do not get up and do it every day, that is when I am losing it. And I will not be happy. I will not feel good. I will not have that serum of joy that the apostles had when Christ they were anointed. 
That is what you have to remember. You, there's a serum of joy for you. Happiness is a moment in time. Joy surpasses all understanding. Joy just stays in you. And if you do something that gives you joy, and another person's opinion is that you have such a big ego. I asked somebody once, could you weigh my ego for me since you think it's so big and tell me how much it weighs? I am really interested in knowing. So they will be fuddled. They looked at me like I had 12 heads. But you told me I had a big ego. So how big is it? How much does it weigh? It's not an ego to push through and to do your best. Because you have the gap. In the middle is the gap. So if you're doing your best and you come to the gap, you're going to pause. If you do not recognize the gap, because you need to go down in the gap to find yourself. Every now and again, no matter how good you are, how bad you are, we always have to stop in the gap because it's in the gap that we recognize what it is we're doing good and what it is we're not doing good. As in, in the gap, that we can choose to fix it going forward, not going backward. If, the, there's an old English saying that if stands stiff. If I only knew I would have never done that, well, you know what, you're not going to have if as a friend anymore. No, you know, no, you never do it again. And that's the gap. So when you are doing this thing and you're standing and you're not moving, you're not going right, you're not going less, you just reach to that fork in the road. That's where you breathe. That's where you concentrate. That's where you focus. That's where your persistency to continue becomes. You might have to crawl out of the gap on knees, hands and knees and cuts and bruises. But once you reach the top of that thing, you have to decide. Where do I want to go? And that is what matters. So wherever you go, that's where you are. And it's all to do with your thoughts and your words. Do not criticize me or anyone. Because each time you do that, you're criticizing yourself. We have to learn to listen and let them speak. Because it's in listening we get understanding. It's my 415 observation that I find peace. It's there do I, I notice, I observe, and I become aware of what is happening in the sky. You look up to the sky, some days it's just, the clouds look like they have something. I remember as a child again, I'm old, right? So I can remember everything as a child. But the fishermen that used to, my dad had these boats and men went out to fish on them. And... They would look up at the sky and they would say, oh, lots of fish coming in today based on the formation of the clouds. So, you know, they, they don't tell us anything. We don't know it, but we just hear those little things. So is that how the message comes to us, through looking up to the hills when winds come down, my help, my help come from the Creator who made heaven and earth, you know. The sky is so, there's going to be a lot of fishermen coming home with loaded boats of fish today. I wonder what you see at a 415 sky. What is there for you? And maybe you're not searching. One thing I know for sure, when you're looking up at the sky, that is not the time to pray or to ask for more. Because in all of your asking, you're still not, you still haven't used what you receive. You haven't shared what you have. So stop asking and look up, pause, observe, breathe. And when your mind wanders, let it go. But please do not ask for more. And if you are grateful enough, remember to say, oh, I, I'm so grateful I woke up and I can see this formation of the clouds. No meaning to you, no meaning to anybody. But somewhere, somewhere, there is a person that will get a meaning from that. And maybe it's you today. So observe, listen, focus, stick to it. What works, do not stop doing it. Be persistent, show up, and let the rest fall. 
and have a great and wonderful day. So wonderful people, how are you guys doing today? How are you feeling today? So Arita, you could call in Don, Loretta and Lana. How are you feeling today? So remember, it's all up to you. Nobody else is coming. Hi, Ra Hi Rochelle, how are you? Uh, Raquel, how are you? Haven't seen you for a while. So anyway, have a great and wonderful morning, everybody. Take care, and I'll see you on the other side of time. Thank you, Lana. Thank you for that. I an amazing life. Thank you, Yuko. Thank you so much. When you guys get a little injection from the live, share it. Tell me if you got something or tell somebody. I was watching this and she was talking about exactly that. That's important. Have a great and wonderful morning. I'll see you guys on the other side of time. Bye-bye. Love you.